welcome everyone. We are now for the last session about computer science and computer engineering. The topic of this session is about image and vision. And now we have uh, three words uh, will be presented. The first one is by Miguel Gutierrez Velázquez and Mario Chacón Murguía. Murguía. The name of the work is Parasite Detection in Copro Images with a Modified Faster RCNN. So you will have 15 minutes to present, and after that, we have the questions. Okay. Thank okay. you. So, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to me be here with you today. And this presentation is about the paper called uh, Parasite Detection in Copro Images with a Modified Faster RCNN. And the authors are Mario Ignacio Chacon Murguia and, and myself, Miguel Angel Gutierrez Velasquez. The content of this presentation is a briefly introduction to methodology, which consists in the database, the cost functions of faster or CNA, and the modified cost functions to get a new uh, model called faster or CNNN, experiments and results, a discussion, and conclusion and future work. So, first of all, we need to understand what problem we want to solve. The problem we want to solve is the detection. So the detection consists not only in labeling the object of interest in, in an image, but also in, in giving visual eye to uh, quickly identify where is the location of the object of, of interest. The, 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 the object detection has a lot of applications in medicine, such as escalation detection, drug ball detection, cancer detection, and parasite detection. So by saying this, we we the goal of this work is to detect GoPro parasites in a um, small and abundant class uh, uh, data set that was acquired for solving some real world applications. So first of all, let's see the data set that we, we use. This data set was acquired uh, with a uh, 4EX Zoom with the technique of wet mount uh, focal test. All the images have the same spatial dimensions, and they were uh, labeled by, by an expert. Each label is uh, can be one of the of four different types of parasites: the H, E, C, E, H, I, and E, H, O. Here we see the distribution um, of both the number of images and the number of parasites in each set, trying validation and testing set of the four uh, classes. And, and here we see uh, examples of each of one classes, and um, all the images are, are very visually very very similar. So this is a good example to to know uh, uh, what are uh, the images like. So now let's see the cost functions of the faster CNN. Faster uh, is a two-stage object detector, uh, and is a very well known. So this two-stage detector means that first they um, it localizes the object of interest and then classifies them. The localization of the object of interest is performed by the Russian proposal uh, network, which is which was the main uh, contribution of this uh, of this uh, model. So let's see the cost functions of the RPN. This is the cost function in which we, we see two two principal terms. One of them is um, it compares the coordinates of the uh, output model uh, against the true uh, the ground truth coordinates, which is um, the the left term, and the the right term is um, compares the the output of the model with the ground truth. And this comparison is if the model correctly assigns a given ratio of the image as an object of interest. Or as a backer. Also, uh, see we see a, 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 an example. We have an answer box in red, which which contains the object of interest, and we have uh, uh, other four answer boxes which are backgrounds. So the racial proportion network classifies uh, each answer box to the to the corresponding class. After we do, uh, we do the localization of the object of interest. Now we need to, to classify them. And such classification depends on this L, uh, cost function, which is L class function. And here again, we have two terms. One term, again, 
compares the uh, coordinates predicted by the model against the uh, ground truth coordinates. And this term uh, refers to the probability of uh, a given uh, object of interest belongs to class C. So once we uh, located an object of interest, we assign them um, the corresponding class by obtaining the maximum probability given by the model. So by saying this, now we go back to, to know our data in, because we uh, the changes in the in the cost function were to the to the data that we have. First, take a look at the reason that why we change the the term uh, LCLA that is the cross binary entropy in the source function of the RPN. So let's see again our data. We see that. The, most of the pixels belong to the background instead of the object of interest. So it is very clear that we have an imbalanced test problem uh, between uh, object of interest and background. So to overcome this problem, we change um, the, the cost function by using the focal loss function instead of the binary cross entropy. The focal loss function was presented in the retinal net model. And here is um, uh, defined mathematically. And this function, what does is to um, assign more weight to those hard to classify samples <clears throat> rather than keeping the same weight in both hard to classify samples and easy to classify. In this case, easy to classify samples refers to the background answer boxes because as the amount of background is really big, if we consider the same weight to background and object of interest, the loss function will depend only on the background. So as we need to, uh, to detect correctly the, the small class that is uh, object of interest, we use this, uh, this function. And this function um, depends on two parameters, alpha and gamma, and these values were obtaining uh, experimentally. So now instead of having the binary percent of each term in the other pair uh, cost function, we add the focal loss function. And now let's see the modification to the LCA error class function. So again, we need to see our data in order to understand why we made those changes. So here we have again, the table of the distribution of the, of the parasites. So here I highlighted um, the total amount of parasites per class. So we see that we have one class with 182 parasites and another class with 47 parasites. So again, it's very clear that we have an imbalanced test problem. So to solve this, this situation, what we did is to add, again, different weights to each class. Those weights were obtained by the following equation, in which we have the weight of the C class is equal to, uh, uh, to 1 minus the cardinality of the training set of the C class over the cardinality of the complete training set. So with these new weights uh, are, are presented here, and we see that the class EHO has less weight because has the, the the most number of parasites and the class EC has the, the the bigger weight because has the less number of parasites. So we did we control the importance in the loss uh, function of of all uh, class of parasites. So uh, the new uh, cost function is as follows. So we we just add this new weight into the into the uh, loss function. So to compare the performance of both models, we achieved uh, two experiments A1 and A2, each of one using faster or CNN and the modification uh, respectively. All the hyperparameters remain the same and we use uh, ACGB uh, optimizers with a fixed learning rate. So the only thing that we changed was the model to, 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 to make a fair comparison between those models. So we here um, I'm presenting the the MAP metric on the validation set during the training. So uh, both models reach its maximum value almost at the same epoch, and um, the faster CNN model has a uh, one percent more uh, MAP metric. But we need to understand more more of uh, the results. So to do that, we we perform inference all over. The all over uh, images of the dead parasite that, that, that is our data set. In order to understand more, 
the impact of, of the modifications. So we select an intersection of Virginia of 0.5 to make the inference. And we obtain these two uh, confusion matrix. And we observe that uh, with M1 uh, model, we have a, a bias towards the VH class because a lot of predictions while, uh, of the model are as VH class. So that uh, such a bias decreases notably in the M2 model. And in the other three classes, we uh, correctly classify more parasites than we, uh, that with M1 model. So from that, uh, from those confusion metrics, we obtain um, the metrics. The metrics used are precision, recal, and F1 score for localization. And we use the balance accuracy metric for classification. We use this metric for classification because we have a map and balance cl uh, classes. So this is a, a, a really good metric to, to correctly uh, and know the performance of a classification model. So we see that in both state shape localization and, and classification, the model with the cost function modification outperforms the, the original uh, faster CNN model. So um, the model work as uh, as expected because we realize uh, modifications in both localization cost function and classification cost function. Now we see here examples of inference of of the M2 model. So this is the the output of, of our model. We have uh, the image and a bounding box containing the object of interest and the label indicating the corresponding class of, of that parcel. So now let's go to the discussion. It is kind of hard to compare with other um, works because we are using our own dataset. So we consider, uh, first of all, uh, those uh, um, approaches, um, well, the approach that use object detector because uh, we see in the literature that it is very common to use an image processing technique for the, the localization and then the classification. But as we, we are using a deep object detector, so we are only comparing with those works that uses um, object detectors too. And we uh, selected three parameters to, to compare in some way or work with those publishes in, in the literature. And those parameters are the number of images, the number of parasites, and the number of classes. So we see here that uh, given that uh, that information or work is a uh, pretty competitive uh, result comparing to the state of the art. We can see, for example, that there is a work with 297 images that uh, also tries to classify four classes, but only has an MEP of 0 0.73, which is like 9% less than, than, than ours. And we see other world, we have a, a really high MMP, but the number of parasites are of thousands or even a hundred of thousands. So given the number of images and number of parasites and the amount of classes that we want to classify, we see that our, our results is pretty competitive. So now into the conclusions, um, we train the faster CNN and faster CNNN. And we select the model with the highest MAP in both cases. And we see that the modifications improved uh, the, the, the original model as we expected because we deal with imbalance classes in the localization and classification stages. Also, we rely, uh, we, we did a, a really deep comparison between uh, the two models to compare and to see where is the advantage. Of, of the modification of, of the of the cost functions and such improvements can be seen in the in the metrics that we use. Also, we observe that M1 have a, a really marked bias towards one class, and that bias decreases notably in M2. So that means that the modification again on the cost functions help the model to to not get a bias, which is a, a, a bad thing in a in a in a deep learning model. So, uh, and as a future goal, reminds and uh, the uh, the calculation of the base alpha and gamma parameters. As I said before, those parameters were selected experimentally, but now we want 
that the model itself calculates which uh, uh, alpha and gamma parameters are the best ones uh, for a given data set. So, and that is the, the work that we are doing, uh, that, are, that we are currently doing. And well, that's everything for me now. And so, I don't, I don't know if you have any questions. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. Now we are going to have a lot of questions. Anybody, please? Um, I want to uh, say the problem. The, in one of your pictures, you show the, how the a loss function decreases yeah. against the which parameter. But it is not the uh, another report, but it means a probability. Yes. How do you get that? Uh, yeah. I don't understand. This, um, these lines are um, are obtained experimentally. So, for example, the focal loss is the general form of the cross binary entropy. And that happens when gamma is equal to one, so we obtain the binary cross entropy. So, in this case, the probability. Uh, means that as we have more samples of a given class, it is very, it's, it's more likely to obtain that class in, in the data that we have. So this uh, easy to, to classify samples means that they have a high probability because they are the background. Okay. It is a uh, like, um, summation of what you uh, get uh, with Loss and probability. Yes. So it is a, a relation between loss and probability. Yes. It is not the way the uh, uh, no, it's not the training. Yeah, it's it's not a training phase. It is comparing the probability oh. with the loss. Yes, I, I have a question, maybe super easy, but you say uh, faster. What is, what is the difference between the first model and the second model in time? Well, in, in terms of time, they're almost the same. So uh, I think that the variation during the 100 epochs was used like uh, a half and a minute. So it was it got no difference in, 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 in time of training. Okay. So that's one of the reasons that I didn't present the time of training because the improvement wasn't there, but in the other aspect. Thank you. Yeah, please. I have a question regarding um, the things you mentioned in your conclusion about the bias towards the BH class. Uh, which uh, kind of parasite is the BH class? So, what does um, for the real world application mean that your system has a bias towards this class um, when you use the whole system in a real world um, scenario? Oh, well, uh, first of all, uh, these uh, this parasite can have or can cause a specific disease. So it's very important to correctly identify which parasite is in an image because uh, so the doctors can make an accurate, uh, 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 can accurately say the patient which disease they have. So maybe the treatment will be different if we detect one parasite instead of other. So it is really important to decrease that bias because we make sure that the that the results are going to be as they should be. So the, this parasite can promote is a, a disease, and if we have a model with bias, a lot of parasites that belongs to other classes will be classified as VH. So the treatment will be different. So it is very important to the patient to to correctly be attended for the parasite. And that person has a bias because it is visually more likely that uh, that EC class and EHO class than the other parasites. So it's because uh, the visually similarity, similarity, and so the model tends to uh, to have a bias towards that parasite. So for um, comparing comparing the BH class to other parasites, you do not know if it's like worse if you classify the uh, BH class over other classes for like treatment or how how the 
diag diagnosis um, is going to be effective. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is very important because uh, the treatment will be different depending on which parasite has the patient. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think this is all because of the uh, uh, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, Good morning, I am Carol Osorio. Um, the next, the next uh, presentation, the next work uh, is by Carlos Osorio Quero, Jose Antonio Cisnero Martinez, and Ben Ramos Garcia. And the name of the work is RedNet U2Net Augmenting 2D, 3D Image Reconstruction Through Untrained Deep Learning Models for Face Retrieval in Hazel. Okay. Is the presenter already? Yes, for here. Yeah. Can you just see the uh, 15 minutes for your presentation? Also, if you can okay. please uh, turn on your camera. No, it's, this is desktop without the camera. Okay, okay uh, good morning, uh, everyone. For today, they have a presentation titled Press UNES. Argument to do a 3D image reconstruction to our own training deep learning models for facial retrieval. Then, continuing today, I have a uh, We are not hearing you. Maybe in, in the configuration of your um, application. Ready. Okay. Uh, the continuing today, I in this show why uh, I will talk about the method for the fast retrieval and swap application and the physical model discussion intensity based on the fast retrieval stimulation proposal uh, fast retrieval method fast based one on the internet the certain conclusion in introduction. They go the, the faster retriever province is the reconstruction objects and uh, interfere profile using the same measure a uh, giving information about the criteria of the main system represented by on the operate is a relation object of the measure intensity the other and the neural operation very metro based on the composition of my tennis are values the metro invoker, the application of the grind for transformers, some basic technical uh, shows the run faster idea. We use a recovery fast information of the optical workflow or image, the, co the code illumination and code detection, and similar using the code protection. This method aiding the to extraction the first information. However, this method I can encode in the other problem due to the loss of the all your information and letting converse in conversion insure. A possible solution to the convert problem in the faster retriever in implementation of the deep learning and the treating the faster retriever problem and the inversion problem, various neural network model has been presentation the proposed show the CNN and Generation of RBC network based on the, on the data set. I'm over recent method, I like training and uh, did imagine without, without the data set. Okay. This method using an um, unit live neural method and the training sequence involves integration of the physical model, for him, for example, Helen Saxon, to estimate of five images, a true interaction sequence between network and physical model. Different application in the fast retrieval are the power through extraction, essential information for intensity data, internal learning, the better imaging, discounts, and quality control is the potential to advance various fields by employing the deal on the standing of the origin infrastructure and characteristics, for example, medical as the X-ray imaging, magnetic resonance, biometric microscopy, industrial application, and the structure testing, material construction, interferometry three d imaging. Uh, the physical models 
for estimation nonlinear problems, estimation, the thinner and the intensity can be brought and then convert optimization. In this case, application uh, optimization model, intensity imaging and distance relation to the field. Uh, the faster return, uh, I can use the Herbert Saxon, in interaction method of the faster return for magnitude data, operation of Fourier domain, be, begin to write in phase assigned to the Fourier transformation, the interesting to the phase with Kim magnitude feature. This process and trending between Fourier and spatial domains with the conversion they have a section agreeing, assuming place can be a termination for magnitude data, or in contrary, including no negative, or then achieve it to using absolute value or squaring model for Fourier transformation. Other method, Fourier Glyson algorithm, is a method in place with a certain criteria. We involve the recovery fast information for intensity emission of the welfare we and the complex values. But by relate on the principle that the Fourier transformation of the year auto correlation function of the desired fast information to interaction process, the according estimation the fast on the well well feed by the traditional mission intensity of fluids and transformation and correlation. Okay, in the faster tier, the task, the faster tier, I find introducing and training faster, faster tier and producer. The process begin in the application of the Fourier based forward models based on the Evans Saxon or Fourier or Fourier. The method to evaluation input and derivative intensity in, in, in distribution in the main place. Differential models serving at the input and the untraining neural work. Consideration to estimate the new file information behind examining the performance to the distant neural network, the neural estimation, the fast information by comparison diffraction the model of time for estimation files where you're in diffraction model. The general neural network involving minimizing the, the error squares with the estimation diffraction model, we are the device in input imaging and diffraction model for using in the same form. Altering for estimation and different information to achieve the employee inversion processing or operate imagine phase in the loss generation during the processing using the to find the training weight and your own network interesting process allow the other definition the estimated phase and in charming the neural network performance in the very fast retrieval the travel text we use on the data set uh, this work uh, proposed a new configuration network the rest to net provide a demonstration of the sequence and states involving an involving neural network for imaging segmentation, focus in coding and layers. The proceeding begin by replace the chamber, the input tensor aligning with consideration dimension, the solution extraction reference filter through application on the very layer that incorporation bus normalis and reload activation function for my structuring with not the red block. Other refined representation, a spatial resolution is the channel via the mass pullings, sequence and error using the transformer conversion on the unsampling corporation scheme, consideration to return on the safe work, a space information with the, the coding layer, the including of the student connection for the loser, the network overall performance. A high comparison, the different different version of the year model, a different performance complexity and processing analysis based one on the proposed new methods. A, in the experiment of the year phase, the experiment the configuration and the laser meter, we are the well left in the the red in the employee laser beam by direction through and the spatial filter and the lens to modification in dimension. The enlarger and laser beam in the direction into the larger objects enable the acquisition diffraction imaging after using the sensor camera, using the pixel information. The capture information allows distance capture you design developing and the model physics and the model analyze. To the asset reconstruction, okay, uh, different application in the lab, the major differentiation distance for the to the three phase retrieval reconstruction. 
uh, define different distance between the, in the, the samples to the sensor camera, okay? Uh, using different, different object tests. Uh, this, in this case, the test parameters. Okay, in the field, in the field, field analysis, email refertation, and to the fast retrieval estimation, you say you need a physical model, Kevin Saxon. In the next test, a reconstruction in 3D, the 3D estimation fast retrieval, you say you need image generation and combination in shape for shading to generate the image. In the case, in the case, the, the Fourier, uh, I can I can see improvements in the in the characterization in future in the image, a reconstruction in the three in three image using the reference image to to three D. To assess the reconstruction of the three image, we employ the reference method to determine the symmetry, the structure, and charge entropy image on time using the deep learning. To generate the image, we apply the for shading to the to the image. The process involves the scene integration and the neural, neural, neural network and physical model. The evaluation of the 3D image and quality release, release on the 2D cross symmetric and the snippets. It will clarification symmetric on the 3D image with the value of new cell indicate optimal and the mesh and quality one superior complete integration in the mesh. Recuperation of the 3D image resulting for the reconstruction, we are normalizing the 3D image in the test image. In the inclusion, combination of the neural models and physical models, uh, efficient and address to the 3D and fast retrieval, we are using on the data set. Okay? We can assess various metro model fast retrieval technique from the existing literature. I don't know what is, what is, is the proof method. We provide a demonstration of the performance in the tablet one. Can you see? Okay, the evaluation of the processing time, compression, and performance. In, the, in this case, uh, the new proposal on the, the neuro and the high complexity and win performance. A unique achievement we propose on the time around the Below uh, one second. In the region of super performance, a reduction of distortion, can you see in the in the test? Comparison between in the using and the heavy saxo, I can see I have half uh, noise and irregularization in surface, in this case application of the metal and the smoking surface. In the metal stabilization unit, supervising of the of the unit. Uh, any question? Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. Now, if anybody has a question, not online. No. 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 Question. Okay, and so there's no questions. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Now, we have some minutes for the next presentation, but the presenter is here. Are you okay if you start? Sure. Okay. okay the next presentation is uh, by Stephen uh, Ford. Yes. Sorry by the pronunciation. Oh, it's tough. David Newpower. Yes. Wilfried the Pussy, so almost my name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stefan Talfanger and Marcus Vince. And the name of the, the paper is Ross Driver, it's assembly planning framework incorporated a screw detection. Okay. Thank you. Um, as already, already mentioned, my name is Timon Hubert. I'm from the Practical Robotics Institute Austria, located in Vienna. And I'm going to present you uh, our project and part, especially two parts of our project, which is the system architecture, um, the ROS-driven disassembly planning framework. That's the first part. Um, 
second part um, is focusing on the screw detection. So first part is mostly about um, system architecture and the planning framework, um, especially I created. And the second part is about the screw detection, uh, the visual computing part, um, which is all combined in the smart disk project. So, well, it's a, um, um, a research project um, with five partners um, in Vienna, um, Austria, and also some partners in Germany. And it's funded by these two um, um, funding agencies. So it's always nice for this funding agency for the dissemination um, that we present our work. Um, and so I would also like to ask you, somebody, if you take a pic taking a picture um, okay. for the dissemination in the next slide, maybe, <laughs> and maybe send it to me so yeah. that I can send it to the um, uh, re um, funding agency. So yeah, yeah, yeah. can take a picture, it would be great. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's start with the uh, project. So um, the whole project is about disassembly of electronics waste. Why? Um, electronics waste is the fastest growing waste stream in the European Union and probably not only in the European Union. And there are four major problems for recycling electronics waste. It's the non-uniformity. Um, you never know what kind of product you want to disassemble. <clears throat> then there are uh, problems with damages and deformations. You never know their shape and uh, uh, actual status of, of your electronics waste. It can be arbitrary, deformed or damaged. And also the cleanliness, cleanliness is, is the problem. So um, you don't really know how clean the project, uh, the product is you want to disassemble. And it's still important to um, disassemble electronics waste because you have precious materials, metals, um, which you can recycle in um, new products. Um, I have a video of a use case we are uh, focusing in our project. It's an antenna amplifier, which you will find next to a, a radio uh, antenna uh, for uh, phone networks. And I'm going to start the video. It's uh, one of our partners in Austria, um, and they are manually disassembling this antenna amplifier to get to the different uh, base materials, like the um, insides. And the whole process takes around 45 minutes for one of these antenna amplifiers. And so I speeded it up uh, 20 times the speed. And you can see there is a lot of electronics inside, uh, PCBs and all different kinds of cables and multiple PCBs on multiple layers. And that's uh, uh, all hold, held together with a lot of screws. Um, you see um, there are some quite tricky handling operations. We're not focusing on the in the project in the beginning, but as you can see, it's a couple of hundreds of screws. You need to unscrew to get to the different layers. And this is the most um, um, challenging part and the most time consuming part in disassembling such a product. And uh, as I said, the, we, we don't really know how the product looks like. So we wanted to create a system which detects, especially in the beginning, the screws and automatically unscrews, especially the screws in the beginning. And then we would focus in the uh, ongoing project on also handling operations. So that's the, in the end, you have a couple of hundred screws. So we want to automate the whole thing. And um, since we have these two or four major problems of you never know what kind of thing you get. Um, so we focus a lot of um, our project is focusing on replanning in the in the disassembly process. Since um, you want to start with a plan and then maybe you have a screw which is deformed or broken and then maybe you want to switch the operator. So you want to replan the whole process and start with a new plan and maybe do this multiple times. And depending on the use case, you have multiple replanning uh, scenarios. And also we would like to uh, implement the whole thing in a 
generalized manner. So the whole engine we created in this project is not only uh, focusing on disassembly of electronics waste, but as a generalized engine uh, to do planning and replanning tasks. So basically, we have a vision system with the camera detecting the screws. I will focus on in the second part. We have the robot, and uh, we want to get the information from the from the camera to our decision making um, um, component, which is doing the planning using an ontology. So we're using semantic reasoning to infer new knowledge from existing knowledge, and this is quite handy. I will show it in the next couple of slides why we're using this. And this is basically the system architecture and some parts of the um, knowledge model, but I will get into more detail afterwards. So as I said, it's a generalized engine we created and it's um, focusing on generalized planning problems. So in any planning problem, you want to describe what kind of actions do you have in your domain. So you describe the domain, which kind of feasible actions are uh, possible in your whole system. And then in the first step, our engine cre uh, queries only relevant information from our ontology, which is um, um, cons um, mentioned in this domain. So from our whole knowledge base, we only want to use the information which is relevant for planning. This, um, creates only a subset of it. And we also want to extract the types uh, for the planning. Uh, we map the whole uh, syntax and semantics, do some planning um, with uh, PDDL. It's a problem domain definition language um, with a generalized planning engine. Um, retrieve the plan and then execute the plan. And during the plan execution, uh, we have to, um, after each plan um, action, we have to update our state. So if we do replanning, um, we have the most updated state. Because if during the execution, the execution fails because a screw is broken or something like that, uh, we have to do the whole thing all over again, generate a new plan and start with the execution all over again. So how does this uh, whole system looks in our ontology database model? Um, we have our disassembly object consisting of multiple parts which are connected by screws. And these screws um, are quite relevant for um, um, controlling the robot to the particular screw, but for the actual um, planning, it's not that important. So in, in theory, um, in our model, we um, we have all the information from the whole um, object. So we have the different parts um, having connections and the different screws. Um, multiple screws can be um, part of a connection and they can be stuck or too tight. So this information can be used for the planning. And we realized in our project that the planning uh, time the planner needs to generate a new plan is exponentially growing with the instances we put into the um, system. So if you tell the planner all about 10 things, he can quite efficiently uh, generate the plan. But if you put in 100 things, it will um, take way more time. And we want to have the system in real time or almost re real time. We don't want to wait five minutes. Um, so we have to um, get our system as efficient as possible. So as I said in, in the beginning, in our use case, we have a couple of hundred screws. And with the couple of hundred screws, uh, if we put that into a planner, it will, would take too much time, a couple of minutes or something like that. So we uh, are using our ontology to, sub um, to extract a small subset of the whole um, model, which is relevant for the planner. So only the relevant information. So for example, only the outer parts are, are um, sent to the planner. So only parts which are kind of not connected in the center because you can only um, start disassembling from outside to the inside. You do not care about the inside because you start outside, do the replanning, um, and so on, like a um, almost like a multiple shells. And also, you do not um, want to get the information about all the screws, but only this um, the whole connections. The screws are, are used 
to control the robot to the actual screws. But for planning, it's not really relevant uh, to know about every screw, but only about the parts. And we are using this whole information in our um, system and also implemented a couple of um, um, mechanisms, especially four mechanisms, to make this whole, uh, whole engine more generalizable towards uh, other applications, planning applications, not only um, um, the screws or the disassembly process. Um, but I think this might take too much time to um, get into detail, but we're using a lot of code generation, um, mappings between different um, data classes to make the whole process a little bit more uh, easy to implement and also adapt the whole system towards new applications and domains. I can go into detail uh, if you ask me the questions afterwards. Um, because I also want to present the second part of the project, which is, which is the um, screw detection. We want to get uh, 60 posts, so position and rotation of the different screws to actually uh, generate the plans. And we're using a pipeline using uh, 2D screw de position detection of RGB images. We're having an RGB D sensor, and we're using only the RGB images using uh, CNN to detect the screws. And then we do 3D pose estimation of the screws, uh, reproject the 2D positions into 3D space using the projection matrix, and then we do the rotation estimation using, using a fitting plane since our objects are quite flat. So this is an assumption we use in this um, uh, use case. And we generated a fantastic a data set, uh, modeling a lot of old hats in different sizes, position, viewing angles, lighting conditions, and so on with 450 training samples, um, with texture randomization to degrade, to simulate the degradation of screws. And also we created a real world data set using these antenna amplifiers you have seen before and manually um, annotated them. And here's on the right hand side, you see examples of these gener generated um, synthetic um, images for the training using texture randomization uh, to force the detection of geometry and not um, colors, stuff like that. And here are some results, how this whole thing looks visualized after detection. And um, for the evaluation of the screw detection, we're using, um, we, we started with three different models, the RCNN, the FASTA RCNN and the FCOS. Uh, back, uh, all of these three models are backed using the ResNet 50, and we we are using um, and we, we just compared the three um, different um, detectors using the mean average precision, and the uh, FCOS performed best. So we also evaluated the same um, architecture for uh, the real world um, data set which yielded a mean average precision of 0 0.8. Um, yeah, and that's the evaluation of the um, whole screw detection. And we're currently in the process of evaluating um, also the whole uh, use case, which takes a lot of um, yeah time to use um, the whole hardware setup. But we, we <coughs> with the architecture we pro uh, I proposed in the beginning, we see it's it's quite handy to um, implement the whole uh, use case only in a couple of hours rather than implementing the whole use case by implementing every uh, scenario. Yes. So this is um, mostly the parts I'm, I presented today. So thank you for your presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, very interesting. Um, anybody has a question? Oh, are you sure that your model has a bias toward the geometry? Sorry, a model a if, bias towards what? See, uh, I mean, if, if you are sure that your model has the bias towards the geometry. Um, I mean, I cannot prove it, but I mean, since we trained it with different textures and different colors, we guess that it, it learned the geometry rather than the, the colors. As you have seen here, 
is using different textures and also um, yeah, different lighting conditions. So um, also during the um, training, we're using image augmentation um, with randomized brightness, contrast and channel intensity. So we, we guess that it's like that. Yeah, yeah because <clears throat> You can see the activations on some filters in your red and in your network in order to see what feature yes some some filter learning so yes this makes sense we should uh, evaluate this yes so, yeah okay anyone <laughs> okay I have one question yes two questions the first one is um uh, how difficult is to include other kinds of Skills or because we mm -hmm. now have six. Yes, uh, but in the future, I don't know a, a, a new. Mm -hmm. I, how, how difficult is to retrain all this system? Um, well, um, we automated the whole test data generation, so it just runs through. I mean, you have to run it and first time generate like the three D models. Um, it's quite automated, so I would say it, it's okay. not that that much. It's on a easy effort, quite easy to yes. Train. And also, we are using a pre-trained network, so also the training process is not that okay. And the other question is about the backbone networks. Mm -hmm. uh, you use ResNet fifty. Yes. Yes. So, um, do you consider to use another deeper network in aiming to increase mm -hmm. that MAP values? Well, um, we tried um, only using different object detectors, and all of all of them already have this mm -hmm. this backbone. So um, we did like a state of the art analysis, mm -hmm. and these three object detectors were like um, in our focus since they were um, mostly applicable for our use case. Mm -hmm. But yes, it would be a quite um, Good consideration to also use different other backbones. Yeah, deeper. I don't know. Yeah. one hundred and one, I think, or two hundred. Yeah, so yeah this, that's a good to increase the the NIP. Mm -hmm. Also, the training time is, is going to increase. Yes, the number of trainer parameters is good. But, okay, this is good. Mm -hmm. Questions? Okay, I took some pictures. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> thank you. So, okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, this is all for this session of computer science. This is, was the, the last presentation, and thank you very much for your assistance. Okay. And the, the Congress is still from tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Thank you.